Hey everybody, Once Bitten here. So this is uh, the new type of video that I talked about uh, that I'm going to start. I'm here with Caleb with White Metal, White Metal Games. Hey, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, he is, we talked about collaborating a little bit, um, bringing him on the, on the channel to, to uh, show me some, some techniques and, and uh, things to help my modeling, my, my hobby. So uh, for this, we're calling it the, the touch-up, but really what we're looking to do is take models that I am somewhat unhappy with, that I think need a little bit more love. And uh, he's going to give me just a few, a few tips on what I, can, what I can do to love it more. And, um, and then I'm going to go do that and bring it back and see if, uh, if that did the trick or if there's something else I should do or whatever. So I grabbed this model. I, if you've watched my channel for long, you've, you've probably seen this a few times. It is, I believe, an old Games Workshop Forest Dragon. Mm -hmm. Caleb tells me that it looks different. It's definitely modified. It's definitely converted. Like someone took some time with this. Yeah. And part of the, one of the giveaways is that it, they did introduce a plastic kit down the road, and I think this is um, an um, a, It's a combination of the plastic kit and some of the older bits, and it's really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really a big fan of the Forest Dragon. I like the Chinese dragon aesthetic to, to Games Workshop dragons anyway. But I'm a sucker for the old models, so. Yeah. So this one, I mean, when it when it's on my channel a long time ago, it was it was just all green. I, it was really I. I don't remember who had painted it. Somebody painted it when I got it. I don't remember how I got this. I got it years and years and years ago. And then I repainted it a couple years ago, and it, and it was better in my eyes. And then I've been working on it a little bit over the last six months, and it is better than it has ever been since in my possession. It looks pretty good. We would be, if a client commissioned had a model like this, we would be pleased with this result. I mean, it's really not bad. I think it's worth noting as a hobbyist, you're always improving your arsenal of painting techniques. So it's really nice idea to go back to your collection every few years and just spend a few days touching things up, refreshing it, so to speak. I think so too. I yeah. think, I mean, one thing, the thing I'm certainly trying to do is to quit buying new models <laughs> as much. Sure. And go back and make the old models uh, sure. a little bit better. Well, and this kind of model, because he's such a collector's piece now, will really draw a lot of attention on the table just because of what he is. And then the painting will only accent that and make it really pop all the more. Yeah. So um, I guess the reason I chose him, despite the fact that I think it, it's better than it has been, is it to, to me, it, color choices that I make sometimes cause me problems. So I like muted colors. I like the, the camouflage range that um, I think Model Air is the, is the series. Yeah, BMA has quite, a, quite an end-up range of those. And, um, and, I, and I love them, I think they're beautiful. Uh, and especially for a forest dragon, I, any kind of monster, I really like that, um, as opposed to maybe bright colors and stuff. Yeah. But the problem is, is it, it seems to me that it doesn't, pop as, it doesn't pop as much as I would like it to. Now, sure. I purposely went green and then with red wings, mm -hmm. because you know they're opposite sides of the color wheel, and, and that I thought would pop, and it does a little bit. Um, I think one of the reasons you're seeing a lot of muted colors here is that even though you have contrast between red and green, these are both cold colors. Like You've selected a very cold green and a very cold red. So what I mean by that is the red has a lot of purples and darker colors in it. The green is more along the lines of blue than let's say yellow. So even though they are contrasting in terms of red versus green, you've got cold reds and cold greens side by side. So working in some warmer colors today, I think will help to sort of spruce it up a bit and help it to visually pop more. Okay. Um, so that's one area I think we should focus on is just bringing up a warm element to the colors. And then um, as you kind of mentioned, these are, are sort of muted in terms of like, they all kind of fade into each other. So by pulling the brights brighter and pushing the darks darker, you will make them look much more standoffish um, so, like for example, with the reds, by making the red a little bit brighter, making the gr the purple in the shadows a little bit deeper, by comparison, it will look look much 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 brighter. The red will, so it'll pop all the more. And one thing, I don't know how this is going to translate to a video, but when I look at the my, at the monitor, the monitor shows more contrast than I see. Yeah, and that's normal. I mean, and, and actually, that's one of the interesting things we run into as a studio when we paint 
is that sometimes how you present it on a video is not exactly how it is presented in real life. Yeah. Um, and that's just the nature of media, unfortunately. Like well, if, it, we, if we take a photo of it, it will also look different. And that's how 2D captures versus a 3D model. Or, like that is a 2D image of a 3D model. Sure. So it's, it's going to be flatter by default. I'm just, I, and I bring that up because if, if I was a viewer, I'd, I would look at that and say, actually, that looks pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would like this to look more like that. Sure. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I'm, look, I'm looking for ways to, to make this pop. I mean, I, there's a lot of brown on brown. Yeah. And as a natural creature, I think that should be the case. But I think that um, the focus of the model shouldn't be the underbelly. So if we make the wings brighter, if we make the scales pop more, then the underbelly and the fleshy area, so to speak, will just be a bridge between those areas. And you won't focus on it as much because you'll be too busy focusing on the other areas of the model. Okay. So what we talked about today is we're going to focus on three areas of the model. We're going to focus on um, pumping up the contrast. And um, to do that, we're going to work on the wings, the scales, and the claws. Um, for the wings, we're going to push the reds a little bit further so that they're a little bit brighter, so that these areas of the model here will sort of stand out a bit more. And as Chad said on the video, it looks very, very bright. But in person, it's a little more muted. So by pushing that a bit, that will help that. The greens here kind of blend in together quite a bit. The light and the dark are not separated by that much, so we're going to add a highlight to some of the green scales to help emphasize those a bit. And lastly, the horns and the belly kind of blend in together as a natural bone color. So what, we've, what I've told Chad I think we should do is we should pick out the bone a bit more. Um, mostly because I'm really a big fan of the flesh areas on this model. I think they look really good. So rather than work away from the work he's doing, with this series of touch-ups, we're trying to minimize our work but maximize our results. Okay. So I would, I would say focusing on the horns to have those pull those out from the body instead of the other way around would be a better solution. Okay. So where do you want to start? Wings. All right, great. So if we start with the wings, basically we're going to be using an airbrush for this. Now I know that not everybody has an airbrush, and I know that not everybody can use an airbrush. And I will say that you can certainly use a dry brush technique as an airbrush technique and get the same basic result. So for example, here on the wings, by simply using a brighter red and dry brushing the highest areas of the wing, we would get a decent result. Um, but for our circuit purposes today, because we are a studio and we paint with an airbrush, we're going to use an airbrush. It is an advanced tool, and I think the technique will translate even if the way you do the technique doesn't. So we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to reset for our airbrush, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're to the airbrushing part. So for um, this portion of the model, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on driving the highlights up and driving the shadows down a bit. So to do that, I've selected three colors. Since um, Chad has mentioned that he's a Vallejo model fan, or color fan, we're gonna use three colors from Vallejo today. First one is Vallejo Game Air Bloody Red. Second one is their regular red color. Vallejo has a ton of reds. This one is 71102. And then they have what they call Hexed Lichen, which is a very deep purple. And the idea here is we're gonna show you these colors on the piece of paper, and we're gonna make sure Chad likes them before we apply them to the model. So to start with, we're gonna start with the basic mid-tone color. Even though it's coming out a bit splotchy at first with the water, you can kind of see the color there. So this is sort of a, a deep red with a lot of purple at the edges. And as you can see here on the very edges of it, that's where the purple is. And what I like about that is that will blend into our shadow color hexed lichen very, very well. Now I'm going to change out the color for some hexed lichen. Trying to blend out the old color. This one's always a little bit thick. That will work. So we're going to thin this out just a tiny bit, just a little thinner, not much. There we go. All right. So now this is basically hexed lichen, pretty deep in purple. But as you can see, if we were to transition this over the red, kind of thinly, we can kind of blend that into sort of a shadowy color. Right. Yeah. And then last but not least, this is our bloody red. This has a lot of orange as a base. Now, orange is a traditionally a warm color, which, as I mentioned at the start of the video, we were talking about working into a, a, a warm palette to get out of the cold palette. So I'm going to sort of clean out you know, any of that old purple real quick. Get a nice, fresh color going. And then... There we go. Oof. 
still got a little bit. There it is. All right. Now this is, you were mentioning earlier what the Q-tips were for. This is what the Q-tips were for. So what we're seeing is we're seeing a little bit of a muted red there. And part of that is because we still have a little bit of the old color left in there. So we're going to take an extra second, clean this out. Because I really wanted this to be a true representation of what this color is. And as you can see when it's up here, that color is very vibrant. And this is muted a bit, mostly because you've got a little bit of the red left over. And that's okay. There's a place for that in airbrushing. Um, when you want to blend the colors naturally, that's a good place. But today, we want pop. There we go. Yeah, yeah, very nice, very vibrant. So even though those colors look very different here, when you blend those a bit and overlay them a bit, what you're going to get is a nice transition of color. So is this red bright enough, you think, that it'll pop on that model? Yeah. All right, yeah, cool. So what I'm going to suggest we do, basically, is we start by laying in the highlight first. So we'll lay in the brightest red. And then we will essentially, from there, work in the shadows a little bit deeper. And the reason I'm suggesting we do that is that it's easier to go over dark, to have dark go over light than light go over dark. Okay. If we overspray the purple, the red will have a hard time staying bright. But if we overspray the bright red and then we overlay that with purple, it's no problem because the purple will go over that naturally. Make sense? Yep. Sure. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate it once on one of the wings. Uh, and then I'm going to hand the airbrush over to Chad because this is about you learning how to do it. So I'm going to start the technique for you and then I'm going to let you sort of give it a try. So we're going to have one section of the wing that looks really good and the rest Maybe. of it's going to... I'm sure it'll be fine. So the first thing to note with airbrushing with this sort of thing is we want to go a little bit lower on our PSI than normal. So currently I think we're probably rocking about a 20 on our gauge. Maybe a little bit less. It's hard to tell from here. But turn it down just a little bit to the left. Take that little knob and turn it just a tiny bit to the left. That's pretty good. All right, great. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to go too strong here because the stronger we go, the more chance we have of like an overspraying problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, like let's say here on the wing, um, in this area, and I'm going to start by just working it up very, very slowly from this area, and then I'm going to sort of tilt this airbrush up just a bit just so that it naturally transitions upwards. I'm going to test it one last time on my palette before I start to apply it. And I think it's going to be very, very gradual at first. We should be starting to see the red now. We're starting to slowly work our way up. And the goal here is to saturate it, so you can see there, it's starting to show itself there. Right. But it's got a pretty natural color transition. We haven't oversprayed it, so you can still see the deep red that you had there primarily. So we're going to continue to push that. And as I want the as the wing fold gets smaller towards the top, I have to be more and more delicate because any overspray up there will destroy a lot of the work you've already done. Right. I'm gonna kind of rock the airbrush back and forth, slowly working my way up. Let me just reduce it a little bit up here. Yeah, very little. One thing you're going to see me do with the trigger is I'm going to work it back and forth like this. And the goal there is to sort of like, kind of like a gate checker at a park. You're just letting out a little bit of pain at a time. And on these fly areas of the wing, I can let out a bit more. Because I'm not as worried about this. I want this to be sort of bright and saturated. Right. But the higher up here I get, the more towards the shadows, the less pain I want to release. You can see we definitely have color coming out. There's definitely plenty of color. But by not pushing it too hard or too fast, we're letting all that shadow work you've already done still live there. Now if I really want to push it a bit further, like down here at the, the big broad area, if I really want to oversaturate, that's the area to do that. So like that down there. Now if you can kind of see here on camera, uh, which is picking it up well. This is the wing we just did, and here's the wing from before. It's pretty, in my opinion, it's a pretty strong difference. Like, you've got a lot of color there. Yeah. But if it's not bright enough for you, you just keep going. You just continue to work on and build up that color until you're satisfied. So we're keeping that nice natural transition that you've already worked for us, and we're just adding to it.
What do you think so far? Something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to give it a try? Sure. Um, now, would you do that as well here, like at the tip, or do you just want to reserve it? Kinda just it kind of just it kind of just depends on how you want to do it. I actually think drawing a little bit to the tip is a really good idea. So, like for example, here, like that. Yeah. 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 And I think that all you do there is you just want to make sure that the brightest part is the tip. So you want to just make sure that that's where the primary application of your color is. So even that, when it cools off, when it dries just a bit, will deepen down. But I think that that will actually really, 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 really nice. Now on this side over here, we've got some green. Um, obviously, I'm not for sure whether or not this color over that will look exactly like you like, because it's going to take on some of the qualities of the green. So what we might have to do with that is build it up over several layers. Okay. So we may start with like let's say a layer of red. I didn't think I didn't think about phone ringing into that. <laughs> We're gonna get the phone. All right. It's a Sunday afternoon. Right? <laughs> Sunday. All right. Hello. All right. Once bitten, don't screw this up. Well, so just take your time with it. There's I would have assumed, mm -hmm. by the way, that, sure. that, that I would do it like this. I well, and you, you and you like certainly that. can. Um, there's no right or wrong. Part of it is how you hold your model. But one of the reasons I'm doing it this way is that if I go and be careful not to get your that paint might still be wet, you might be touching. Mm -hmm. No, oh. right there. Oh. That's literally where we just put the paint. <laughs> now we're good. Perfect. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so uh, certainly there on the tip, that's definitely still wet. So just think about that. I mean, I think it kind of depends on how you want to apply it. By pushing it up this way, um, I'm much less likely to overspray, let's say, the tail. You know, because any overspray is going to hit this area of the model. So right. part of it is based on just the, the most critical areas of the model. Now, I've never painted on camera, so... Okay, well, this will be interesting. Sorry, folks. Just remember, like any painting, any mistakes can be covered up with just more paint. We can always fix stuff. So just take your time. And remember, you want to build it up very gradually, very slowly. Well, I don't think this paint at all so far. Well, and whenever you think that's the case, point it down towards the paint, the, the paper on the table. There you go. This is there. You try to get a feel for how you have it. Exactly. Set. Yeah. Every airbrush is different, and every airbrush is tailored to its user. So you may airbrush, but you may not use in clips. So. I'm nervous. That's what's happening here. No, no paint's going on because I'm afraid to. And that's one another reason too is to do the rocking. If you rock the, air, the trigger back and forth, you're more likely to, let's say, get less pain out. Uh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Take your time. Good. Right. And as you get up towards the top, just depress the trigger a little bit less, so that way you don't override all of those dark colors you've already worked in. Good. Yeah, that's good. Nice. Now, if you guys can see, he's now matching the wing I just did. And even that little bit of highlight is really helping that wing to pop out quite a bit, a lot more than it was. And now that he's applied it down here to the tip, he's drawn some natural interest. And now we just rinse and repeat this on all of these folds. And after that's good and done, we can work in a shadow color to really bring up the, the dark, uh, the, the brightness. So bright looks brightest next to dark. So right now we're establishing the bright value, and then we're working some shadow value, and then it'll really pop. Looks great. Yeah, a little heavy hand to thing. Another nice thing about this color is that it, this red has a lot of orange, and orange is natural contrast for green. So it's going to make the greens look more vibrant too. Now with this particular area where you're going to there, you're going to want to think about overspray. So a little block like that will help you block your claw. Block, oh, the, yeah. down there. So what, it, what I'm telling him to do right now is to use some sort of tangential thing to physically stop spray from getting onto areas of the model he doesn't want it to get into. In this particular case, he's trying to avoid getting them on, let's say, the hand. And all of this color that is now on that card would could have been on the model, and that's the whole point. Yeah, so if you look at this hand, I can't see it. Anyway, well, over, you can. overspray from a few months ago. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very subtle. Um, and the nice thing about this is he could also touch that up with an airbrush, too. So he's he's got a satisfactory layer of highlight on that. So now he's going to move on to another fold of the wing. Good. And again, just take your time. 
Less is more. The more the more of this brightness you work in, the less effective it will be. What? <laughs> you just need a little bit to make a pop. There you go. Great. Okay, so in just a few minutes, really, he's managed to bring up the red quite a bit. So. Yeah. It looks a lot better. Cool. So now, we'll, if you'd like to, we can flip it over and apply something like that similar to some of these areas in here. Now, it kind of just depends, but what I might recommend here is where you've got this, like, overspray of green. We might focus the red, let's say, here, and then work it up less so here. Because this, is, this area of the model is not going to be as noticeable. Sure. You're not going to see it as much. But it is a good time, while we've got the red in there, to touch up any of these areas that you're not 100% satisfied so with. You're talking so like, for example, down there, if you wanted to work it in, or if you want to just, just if you want to make it pop a bit more. Because at some point, someone's going to pick this model up, and they're going to look at it from all sides. So while the red's in your airbrush, a little bit goes all the way. Yeah. And even, right, even just that, I really like that pop. Looks good. So as you guys can see right here, it's where he's working it in. And it just brings a little bit of pop of color to that area of the model. It also helps to diffuse any of those old flesh tones he's trying to get rid of. So you can see we've got a little bit of this orangish color worked in, and now it's just really bright and vibrant. That, that looks, yeah, already looks a lot better. Right? So if we're happy with that, what we're going to do is, I don't know how much red we've got left, but we're going to kill the little bit of red we got left. And as I've been saying so far in the video, bright looks bright next to dark. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to a shadow color. And this is called Hexed Lichen by BMA, or Blio Game Air rather. And Hexed Lichen is essentially a deep purple. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll put it in the airbrush. Now the problem is, is this stuff is really opaque. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in just a little bit of, uh, of a wash with this. You can't see that, but I'm using Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. There it is back there. And then I'm going to mix it by putting my hand over the nozzle. And I'm going to mix it up just a little bit. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to thin out this color so that it's more like this, more transparent. Um, the goal is here is to work this in, but not to destroy the work we've already done. So, for example, like on these deep creases of this wing, by using a semi-transparent purple, my goal is to deepen down the shadow without destroying the highlight. I think I normally would have used a wash. Well, you can't uh, here uh, <laughs> without, without an airbrush. But the nice thing about using an airbrush is that some of the overspray will naturally blend that color down. Yeah. Whereas a wash can be hard to control. And my primary target here is the middle. So you can see the brights look a little bit brighter now that the purple's beside it. Whereas here, it's a little bit more muted. And if for whatever reason you feel like it's too dark, all we do is later go back with one more layer of the brighter, and we overlay that just a tiny bit, and that will help out quite a bit. So by just working this into just some of the subtle shadows, just a little bit, you're going to help that bright pop a little bit more. And I'll let Chad take it for a spin. Do you, um, do you think that take that all the way up? That's entirely up to you. I think these dark recesses are actually pretty good. And what and about yeah, sure. If you wanted to push that a little bit, that's a great area. What he's pointing at now is this small flap of this wing over here. And he, what he's asked is whether or not that's a good place to work in a shadow. And I say, yeah, absolutely. The bright will look brighter next to the dark. The other nice thing about purple is purple is a natural contrasting color to green. So it will look great beside these green scales. And when in doubt, you know. Did just I just put on this? <laughs> on what? I mean... Was that there? Or did I just do that? Was what that there? The the dark, the dark. Uh, I think that was there before. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna say that it was. Okay. So even though you guys can't see it because it's a little it's a little difficult to see, what he's basically doing is he's working a little purple under these creases, and he's just doing it slowly, taking his time. No reason to rush. Now, what we should have done if we were smart, we would have taken a photo at the start of the session, just a photo at the end of the session, but that's okay. Cool. So if for whatever reason um, you later decided that it's too much purple, you just overlay it with a little red, um, and that'll look great. And then while we got the purple in there, again, 
if you look over here and you're like, there's any like other areas at the top of those wings there where you've got some bleed green. Right, yeah. Now's a perfect time to go in there and just sort of tidy it up just a bit. And take your time because you don't want to go over any of the green. There you go, looks great. You want to work in a natural color without destroying the work you've already done. I'm doing this without glasses, so I'd just like to point that out. Which just goes to say how easy it can be. Okay. It looks good. And purple's a nice natural shadow color between green or red. See, I love that. I just really like the way it pops. It takes me longer because I don't want paint out because I'm nervous. That's okay. Any obvious misses? No. Looks good. That does pop a lot more. Good. I mean, and you know, really, that only took about ten minutes worth of work. So just a little bit of work there it goes a long way. And again, I'm not sure that the monitor is accurate. It's actually not that. In person, it looks a little bit different. Yeah, I think um, it looks better in person. I would agree. Yeah. But I would also say that we can always take some photos at the end of the session, and then that way they can see the, the closest representation of accuracy. Yeah. Okay, so if you're happy with the wings for now, what we'll do is we'll move on to another part of the model. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to dump the airbrush real quick, and then we'll come right back after this. All right. All right, we're back. So uh, item number one was working on the wings, um, add some highlights, put in some shadows. Now we're going to go to the scales. So the scales on this model, currently where Chad is at with that, is that he's got two very clear indications of color here. He's got a, di a dark green and a, and a, and a, uh, a bright green. Um, the bright green is more of a mid-tone though, it's kind of like a leafy green. And so to make that pop a little bit more, the, my suggestion to him was to apply a highlight color. So we've done that in a few places on the lower part of this model already. We've already kind of highlighted it up just a little bit. So what I've suggested to Chad is to highlight the tops of some of the scales and the phalanges on some of these, um, these areas, like here on the tail and at the head, this kind of scaled area. And also to focus on parts of the model that sort of stand out a bit, like these veins, or like up here on the snout. So what I've done is I've grabbed a couple different colors here, in case um, you have different colors than we do. This is um, Citadel's Moot Green, which is commonly used for Necrons. And this is P3's formula Necrotite Green, which they commonly use for uh, 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 Cricks, which is their version of Undead. Um, so I'm going to actually use this today, and the reason I'm using Necrotite Green is it has a lot of yellow in the base. Yellow is traditionally um, a natural highlight to green, so this is a perfectly good color. So on our palette here, we've mixed up a little bit of the, the Necrotite Green with some, some water, just to thin it out a bit. And we're going to use the smallest highlight brush we have currently, which is this brush here, which is I think a, a negative two or something like that. And all we're going to do is just grab a little bit of the thinned paint down, and we're just going to apply it to some of the upper, upper areas of some of the scales. Now, we're not going to apply it to every part of the model. We're not going to apply it to every single scale. We're just looking to highlight key portions of the model. So areas like, for example, here, where we're going to apply just a little bit of this paint to the tops of these highlights, just to help pull it up a bit more. And the goal is to make the darker colors look darker by comparison. Likewise, on the tops of these scales, you can already see where I've sort of applied a very, very basic highlight to some of these. And I can re-emphasize that with a second layer if I want to sort of help it pop more. But we're not going to try to hit every single scale. We don't want to make this uniform. We want to make this slightly asymmetrical. So we're going to only highlight the biggest scales. We're going to look for the scales that pop a bit, like this one is at least two times the size of any scale but down beneath it. So we're going to hit the tops of the scales because this is where the sun would be coming from. It would be coming from up, it's hard to see on camera, but if you imagine the dragon is right here, the sun would be coming from up top here. So what we want to do is we want to create that natural sense of highlight. So we're going to apply the highlights to where the tops of the scales would be. And it's okay if it's not perfect, you're just trying to work in a basic level of interest and color there. So that now you can see there's clearly three levels of color. You've got a highlight, a mid-tone, and a deep shadow green. Yeah. What do you think of that? That's yeah, good. I think actually in the past when I've painted this, I, this has been done several times. Sure. The, the difference is, when I did it, I would 
I did dark and then a medium and then a light, but I was always doing the light over the whole scale and over sure. all of them. Yeah. And then it just didn't look right, so then I'd right. wash over it and blah blah blah. Yeah. So this is, you know, I think one of the big differences is is less is more. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, I was trying to explain it. So if if you ever painted a gemstone before and you work in a highlight, you essentially work in the color of the gemstone and then a highlight and then another highlight, and you're refining your highlights. And honestly, refining highlights is, is one of the primary things that advances you to the higher levels of painting is that, you know, Chad has a very good mastery of, of a very standard, you know, block coating painting. And now all he's doing is refining just a little bit. And that little bit of extra effort will make his models look a thousand times better. They'll just look really, really nice when they're out in front and personal. Um, so it's okay to build a model up in layers and when you get tired, step away from it. And as you can clearly see, just come back with some touch-ups. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just applying a little bit of highlight and color. The more layers of depth you have on a model, the harder it is to focus on the mistakes. So in a lot of ways, you'll be covering up any sort of problem areas. I'm not going to do too many because this is where I really need my glasses. Sure. sure. Well, the whole point of this is just to sort of highlight the tops of the layers and just sort of make it pop a bit more. Right. Um, and then to look for some hard edges, like so for example on the tops of the wings there where this sort of scale area is, you could hit that with a very, very fine line highlight and that would help that pop a bit. It doesn't take much. Um, and if for whatever reason you make a mistake, it's just paint, you can always go back and clean it up. Um, so yeah, like tiling, targeting like the tops of those muscles is actually great. Yeah. And all you're trying to do is create one more layer of separation between the dark and the light. Okay. Cool. So when he applies that to multiple areas of the model, it's going to really help it to stand out quite a bit. Yeah. That's easily enough done. Yeah. And if for whatever reason it was too far, you could always glaze it down just a little bit with a darker color and sort of blend it all in together. Right. But one of the reasons that we are approaching this model today the way we are is so that those colors don't blend in too much together. So for example, and a little bit really does go a long way, so for example here, you've already got a really nice detail in this facial area. And you've already got a natural place where a highlight would be. So just by targeting just that upper, upper area there. You don't have to do anything else. I don't have to touch the deep flanges. I can just target just these hard edges. and. Honestly, if I use the side of my brush, it's not hard. It's all about just contact points. But if I go very, very slowly, working my way around, this little bit of work will really pay off. So now that really st stands out a lot more, in my opinion, and really, really pops it. And then areas like here, kind of on this hard snout, I'm going to reverse the model so that, that and naturally I, I'm not coming at it from the wrong angle. By building that up just a little bit here. Not really pushing it too hard. But you can see it kind of stands out a bit more than versus like this. And if for whatever reason it's not enough, you just resaturate. You just go back over with another layer until you are satisfied. And then eventually it'll really help it to pop out. Yeah. Oop, I'm off camera. I'm way off camera. Over here. So cool. So on the next one, I look forward to seeing how that all gets applied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, for the final part of this model, what we've talked about doing is a little bit with the claws and the horns, basically. Um, the idea being to basically, your problem with it right now is that the horns kind of look a lot like the belly and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we could highlight up the flesh or we could highlight up the horns. And my suggestion to, to Chad is to highlight up the horns because there's just, um, those, I feel like pushing those towards bone makes sense. Whereas the, I really love what you've done with the flesh areas on this model. I think they look really good, actually. So I would hate to bring those up any further. I think they're really great. Okay. But I think by bringing up other areas of the model, we can actually make it really, really nice. Um, so we're going to do this in um, kind of a two-part exercise. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix up some paint up on our palette so you guys can kind of see what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this yellowed bone color. We're going to apply that to our palette. This is a Reaper bone color, but you can use any, <laughs> it's a lot of paint. <laughs> this is one of the paints that we don't have a cap for anymore, but that's okay. We're not going to use that cell. We're going to move it. <laughs> that's a lot of paint. That's a lot of paint. We don't recommend that much paint. We're going to move it over here. And that should Cutting be that out. <laughs> well, we're going to use this 
this portion of the palette. So now to this, I'm going to mix in some white. Now white is one of those colors that goes a long way. So rather than applying the white directly into the paint well itself, I'm going to apply it up here up to the side. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start mixing it in gradually. So I'm going to start with just a little bit of white and just see how much it brightens it up. And already you can kind of see how it's starting to brighten up. Yeah. You can see that because you have the natural color over there. Um, and I'm going to grab a little bit more and work that out a bit. So right now we've got a pretty decent mid-tone between those. Um, but I feel like I want to go a little bit brighter. So we'll pull that in. Okay, I guess we're going to grab a little white. <laughs> That's good. I guess we're going to go, go for it. Okay. So once I've got that color on my palette, now the natural thing to do is to test it on the model itself and just to see if it's bright enough. If it is bright enough, great. And if it's not, then we can always add a little bit more white to it. So Chad is using a really good technique here on his horns. And what he's basically done is you can kind of see that he's worked his color not uniformly on and he's kind of done like a stabbing technique where he's come in with a brush and he's kind of done something like this. And I actually think that's a great idea. It works really well. So we're going to use a little bit of this new paint we mixed up. And we're going to try it on just, let's say, one of the horns up here. Um, actually, we'll try it on uh, this horn right there. And we're going to see how much we like it or not. And if we do like it, great. So I can immediately see, for one thing, it's definitely brighter than the underlying color. It's also much brighter than the belly. Um, so even though over here it looks kind of muted on the palette, once you put it on the model, it's very clearly a, a completely different color, much, much brighter. So we're going to apply it to a couple of horns, just so we can kind of see it in context, just to see how we, if we like it or not, and if we think it's over the, over the top, if it's too much or whatever. Okay, so now that you've got it on a couple of horns, what do you think about it? Yeah, I think it's, it's certainly not too much. Yeah, okay. Do you feel like it could go further? Do you want it to be brighter? I think if I wanted it brighter, I would go back again with something lighter and okay. hit just the tip. Yeah, that's true. You could totally do just that. Just the tip. <laughs> so for today, all we're going to do is we're just going to pull this highlight up just a little bit and we're just going to apply it again in a stabbing motion. So you start on the business end of this horn, you basically pull down, pull down, kind of like that. And if you don't get enough paint on there like I just did, it's like I need to saturate the brush here. So the idea is to leave underlying color that you've already built up. You don't want to kill what you've already done, you're just adding to. And so you kind of get this snow peaked glacier look going on where you've got this natural end cap. And as you can see there, as opposed to the flesh, much, much brighter now. Yeah, right. So, okay, so I'm going to hand the brush off to Chad and let him do it. And again, the nice thing about this is it's a pretty simple technique. And you can really build this up with as many layers as you like. You can build this up with, you know, uh, three or four of these layers of foam, which will look really natural. Now what Chad has suggested about bringing in a different color at the tip, it could be white, a brighter color. It could also be black. A lot of times in natural horns we see uh, a darker tip, like black. So you could really go either way with it. And um, That'd be interesting. So if you take it up lighter and lighter and then you... Yeah, because natural it, horns, if you Google like, you like, um, like bull horn, it's like blacker at the tip. And I don't really know why that is, it's just nature that way. It could be something very silly like maybe farmers like scorch the tips of their stag's horns or something like that to make them stronger. I have no idea. But for whatever reason, whenever I think of a horn, I think of a black tip, um, not a bright tip. Um, so for the claws on the underside of the model, what I've recommended is we go the other way, is we use black and do the same technique but with black. Um, and so that'll help those stand out a bit more. Now we're using a pretty small brush, but I will say the smaller the brush, the better in this particular case. So use the smallest brush you're comfortable with um, remembering that the smaller the brush, the more, less paint you're going to be able to put on there, so you're going to have to work slowly. But slowly, in a lot of these cases, will really help quite a bit. And as with all colors, if you don't like it, you can always paint over it. Alright, so am I massively screwing anything up? Nope, looks good. Looks natural. And now that that brighter is on there, you can really clearly see the levels of highlight there. Like if you're looking at those horns straight on, I can now at this point see three to four distinct layers of color. And once you apply that to all the horns uniformly, it's going to really look nice. Unlike the scales where I recommended just doing it on a few, but the horns I recommend doing it to every single one. Sure. And the teeth for that matter. I would do it on the teeth too. Okay. All right. I will do that off camera. Okay. So for the, for the, for the tips of these horns, or not the horns, the claws that he's got here on the bottom, we're going to do the same basic technique where we're going to do it with black. 
So we're, this is Army Painter Matte Black, but really, and my hand is way in camera, but really any black will do here. I'm going to move this guy. Just sometimes it squirts. Sometimes it squirts. <laughs> I've done that. So yeah, the, the paint is unfortunately love to do that. Right, there we go. So we've got a little black on our palette. So the same basic technique here is useful. You're basically just using a little bit of this color. Don't even need to thin this, it's nice and opaque. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work down here on these claws um, and I'm going to basically just take it and sort of pull it in this kind of avalanche style technique. Another uh, good idea here is to use something like a toothpick. You can use a toothpick and sort of draw on the lines. Oh, That's always a fun technique. Okay, so now the claws aren't quite as uniform, they're not quite as brown on brown. Now you've got a, a, you're introducing a new color there. So do you think that works well for those? Yeah, I wonder if they... Um now alternately we could also try the bone down here and see which one of those you like better. I was thinking more like German Grey. Okay, um, sure. Which is basically a black, but it's just not... Black black. Black black. But, okay. But when I, when I do that, I might try that color. Yeah, black, sure. Because I have both. Okay. But the basic technique here is the same. The same technique for the horns that we're using on the, the talons down at the bottom. Yeah. So it's just a stabbing motion to pull it up and bring it up a bit. Okay. So, so he may try a German gray on his own. Um, but the whole point of this was really just to see what simple techniques you could use to really uh, make the model pop out a bit more and stand out. And really, honestly, in just a few minutes, you know, probably 15, 20 minutes worth of work, we've already achieved a lot of that. And then with another hour or so off camera, you'll be able to, I think, pull it up to where we want. Yeah. Yeah. So what we'll do is um, the next time we meet in a month-ish, um, oh. I'll bring back what I've done with the model. Great. And we'll evaluate it and uh, see if it needs more or see if we uh, could move on to another model. Awesome. Um, well, I'm great. I can't wait to see what you do with it. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate your help. Sure. All right, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thanks.